What's up guys, I'm Sean, full-time eBay reseller. You guys know that. This is a day in the life. I've got a lot of things to do today. So I didn't record right when I woke up, but pretty much what that entails is hitting the recumbent bike for 20 to 30 minutes ideally, but I only did 20 today. And then eat breakfast, get my son and wife to work and daycare respectively. And then Randy came in, started doing photos. She comes in at nine o'clock. She's working till two today. Super great to have her here doing photos. She's always killing it. I've got a lot of emails that I was answering earlier. Pretty much sponsorships. I know you guys didn't like the team you won. But I've got another one that's a little bit better. It's coming up in the next video or possibly down the line. We're still working things out. I have a private pick. So some person reached out to me through email. They said, hey, I'm an everything seller. I moved to your town. I don't have an employee anymore, but I have a lot of clothes that I'm just not interested in processing. So he said he would give me first crack at it. So I'm gonna head to that meeting at um, probably in the next 30 minutes. I don't know if they're gonna let me film there, you know, for privacy reasons, but um, we're definitely gonna go over the haul. I'll let you know how much I spent on it, if I even bought it, you know? Sometimes I get presented with deals that just aren't that great. In addition to that, we are going to uh, I don't know. We're going to eat lunch after that for sure. And then we're going to definitely go uh, talk about the move. I'm extremely excited to show you the new layout. Now it's, it's definitely not set up. I haven't even moved my warehouse, but like I said, we're going to have a whole video about that. So full day planned and I don't know, maybe we'll hit up a thrift store in town. We'll have to see. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the whole Metroplex is pretty much like Dallas, Fort Worth are the two biggest cities. And then all the ones around it, though, are like really huge, too. What are you looking for per piece? Do you have an idea? You know what? Because it really changes which ones I pick up. Like some of these are pretty low, like where I would pay like, like two bucks know, a piece. I and then others I'd pay like, probably, you know, bread and butter for you. Uh -huh. Here's the thing. I know your margins. I know what you're going to sell them for. I, I want you to make the money. Okay. Right now it's not making me any money. Okay. And at a garage sale, it's not making me... I mean, yeah, I hear you. Even less. So I got gotcha. you. If it's bread and butter for you, grab it and. It, okay. I mean, I'm not gonna, you know. You're gonna hold me over the fire for like, no. oh, man, okay. It's not gonna, hey, that's a five dollar polo. Cause yeah. You're gonna sell it for twenty five. No. Yeah, it could be. A lot of times, I sell things for nineteen. Yeah. And that's usually the mark for a lot of stuff. All right, so I just got back from the buy that I got from my friend Chris. He was a viewer. He said, hey, I got some stuff. He's a great guy, great seller. Really excited about the stuff. First, before we can like go over that, I gotta do shipping. So we ship every single day. I have one day business handling. I did go and get some lunch, Chinese buffet to go. It's $5.99, no, $5.99 a pound. So yeah, it's a really good deal. Randy's here, Randy, she's off screen, but she's right here, gonna call out the numbers. And I believe we had, what, 43 sales for $970? That's a killer day. Now, typically, it, like, is less because I ship first thing in the morning, usually. So this is, like, early afternoon. You know, it's, like, 1 o'clock. So uh, that's why we have, like, a couple more sales. But awesome day. That's how we do it here at Taylor Exchange. But we're going to show off the best items of that haul. And then I'm also going to give you, like, a little preview shot of the new place downtown where all this warehouse is going to go in this office building. They're working on it, so there's a possibility that um, they're going to be working while we go over there, but regardless, you guys are going to check that out. But I'll just pull and talk about like maybe the best items out of this sales day, and yeah, I think it's going to be good. 13. Easy peasy. Ooh, this is a good one. How much does this one go for? 25. So this is with the uh, Birdwell beach britches so board shorts have sold the last couple days i've noticed a couple more board shorts i had these priced pretty high like 40 bucks but someone sent a 25 dollars offer now i accepted that offer we have 8.99 shipping on all items but i will say if i would have waited till like the summer spring season like a little further on because if we're still in february which is technically winter this probably could have sold for maybe like 35 dollars possibly so taking about 10 dollars less but um that's kind of how it goes sometimes. I'm about churning and burning, especially if it's in the older side of the inventory. We're trying to get those out. All right. 
All right, so we have a great item here. This is a Wrangler, it's vintage style. It's not a brush popper, but it's got this great like Indian Aztec print going on, super colorful. I price this super high. When I see something this kind of flashy, I usually go upwards to like $60 mark. I end up selling it for $40 plus shipping. So it's still really good, but I always, you know, if you don't know the exact price that you should list something at, but you don't see it very often, it's always good just to go high. You can always accept offers or lower your price, but had I listed it at say like $30, it might have sold for $30. Or someone sends an offer of 20 but because I listed it, you know, $60, it gradually kind of went down in price with a price reduction strategy for your eBay store. Very happy someone's going to get this, and I'm right around, what, $48.99 all in for this, so great sale right here. No better time to talk about the sponsor of today's video, Gyro Pack. Gyro Pack has colored poly mailers and colored bubble mailers. They're one of the best companies that I know for bubble mailers, and that's because you can get a 10% discount when you use code TAYLOR10. They've been super reliable with me. There was one time that they were like a little bit slow with tracking, but that's because I ordered 4,000 bags at once. They did come through, and they were very quick on the response with that. Gyropack, by far one of the best companies that I've had sponsor videos, and I've been working with them, and I really appreciate it. You can go to their website. They have all different colors. I go with like the green or the blues but they also have Daisy if you want to go a little crazy. The best part about having colored poly mailers, in my opinion, is whenever you drop off a bunch of colored mailers at the post office, they stick out as opposed to everyone else using white. I think it's an advantage. Everyone at the post office already knows me because I take 30 to 40 items a day, but whenever I have a bunch of green or blue packages, it's really hard to get those like mixed up in the mail. So if you guys are interested in getting any of these poly bags or bubble mailers, make sure to hit the link in the description below and use code TAYLOR10 for 10% off. Ragnar. I gotta go to the post office, buddy. So I just left the post office to drop off the packages and then I had this big giant box. That's a product, it's like a shelving unit or something that I get to review. So companies send me products for free and I give reviews and pretty much just make videos on it. And I got that big one, those two ones to the right and then I had a, this like two returns of course. Now I had one return issue, not those items, but in there, there was two items with the same label on it that the same person sent. So that was like a deal where I think the guy bought eight items and two of them he wanted to return. So in that situation, they said I had to pay for the label to come back, like to pick it up. And I refused it because they're not very profitable items. But um, that buyer kind of messed me up on that. Like they didn't understand what to do. And I didn't really want to pay to get the item back because I don't think they were very expensive items. So uh, right now I need to do product reviews right now. So that's something, but I think I'm gonna go to the thrift store because we have one good one that's just right down the road, so we're gonna see what they got. Very short trip. So my Goodwill used to be like the honey hole of all honey holes. The prices were probably the cheapest in the country. And then it just, the prices went up. The, the quality just went down to, I don't even know. Maybe I'm just used to looking at better items in the bigger city, but yeah. It was pretty rough and then the lines are extremely long. They're down to one register and the machines are slow. Everything about it is just bad. So I didn't even bother like really digging through the racks because it just didn't look good. So pretty much from now, it's uh, mid afternoon. Like I said before, I need to get started on the review videos. I also need to check the situation with the move in because I thought the place would be ready for tomorrow, but I think it might be early next week, which I have to do this move on a Friday to Saturday just because of the vast amount of inventory and shelving units have to be broken down. I also have to set up like the photo station, the shipping station, all that has to be done. So right now I don't have the keys and the property manager is sick right now. So a uh, little bit of an issue, but that's kind of the, the problems that arise and you just have to do the best to kind of like weave your way around the issues and just continue pressing forward and try to get stuff done. I also need to list some items, which I haven't listed anything today. I do have tons of photos because Randy did five hours of photographing and I usually do that towards the end of the night though. You know, I'll just sit casually like, you know, nine to 10 at night and I just list, a, you know, 30 items and then go to bed. So 
that's kind of what I'm thinking I'm going to do. And it's also like freezing rain outside. So very crazy. Yesterday was like 80 degrees and now it's freezing rain and it's like 40 something degrees. So Texas weather, insane. All right. So I just finished up some product reviews. I wasn't able to do that big cabinet, but yeah, that was a $210 cabinet that I get to assemble and do like a how-to video on. And then I get to keep it. So I'll probably end up posting that on Facebook Marketplace or finding somebody local like family or friends that want to like take it off my hands. I wasn't able to make it to the downtown location because the property manager was sick and I wasn't able to get the keys today. So I may have to push the move off until next week, but I can put some clips, you know, showing you what it looks like. There's tons of space in this place. It's going to be three offices. And then I think the ones on the ends have doors and the middle one doesn't have a door, but it does have a giant closet. And Randy's going to have the middle one, which may be the biggest room, but she gets two windows. She's going to have an awesome photo station. We're also going to put the shipping station in that one. And then the far one is going to be the inventory. And then the far one to the left on the opposite side is going to be for like my office to do things like this and to have like a nice desk setup. I figured to close out the video, we would just go through some of the uh, my more favorite items from the pick from Chris today. Um, Thanks a lot, man. I was looking through them and I was like, you know what? There's some really solid pieces. There's some, you know, bread and butter stuff that Brooks Brothers, Ralph Lauren stuff I sell all the time for like not that much money. But some of these, uh, hopefully I can get like a little more money, but we'll just have to see. So starting with this one, I wasn't sure what this was because I didn't see a tag. This is actually a foot joy. It's reversible. They have foot joy embroidered on the back. They have it on the sleeve. They also have uh, on the snaps is where I saw it initially. So this is a great piece. It's kind of like a windbreaker on one side and like a fleece on the other. So pretty interesting. A little difficult to photo. Like you might want to photo. I'll probably have to tell Randy to do two sh full shots of like the inside out or like, <laughs> you know, the, the beige side and then like the fleece side just so that, you know, people can get an understanding of what it is. But yeah, pretty good piece here. It is a bit heavy though. So definitely over a pound and uh, we'll see what it does. It doesn't look like super expensive, but uh, still pretty cool. This one I thought was interesting. This is Abercrombie & Fitch. Now, this is the really heavy hoodie. So I remember this growing up just because other people had it. I mean, when I say really heavy, it's like super thick. Not like canvas type, you know, durability, but uh, a very heavy hoodie. Now, it's a size small, so it's not going to sell for a lot. It's going to be a little bulky, but something kind of just spoke from like junior high that other people had this. They probably paid good money for it, and I could never afford it. Yeah, we went ahead and grabbed this one too. This one here, this is a, an interesting one. So it's RSVLTS, which is Roosevelt, and they have extremely expensive like short sleeve bud shirts. I've never seen a t-shirt by them, but it also has Bud Weiser. So it was either some type of collab. The back has like some really great graphics. And who knows, this might just be like a $15 one. It says Spring Break 91, uh, Bud Paradise. 2XL, you know, it's white, but... Uh, we're just going to see. It's not like from 1991. Anything like screen printed is going to be, um, you know, like new age. But I don't know. I thought it was cool. I've never seen it. So I decided good brand, you know, decided to pick it up. This is a cool one too. This is Indian Motorcycle. Every time I think of Indian Motorcycle, I think of the American Pickers and that uh, they're always looking at motorcycle stuff. It has a really cool zipper right here on the front with a nice Indian head. And it's got like the sleeves. This actually might be one of the best pieces. It is stained here. I did not see that when I bought it, unless that's just part of it. You know what? That actually made, no, that's just part of it. It's not stained. It's got like this um, white with like rust kind of look to it. That's very interesting. The only way I can tell that it's not stained is because it's too uniform throughout the coloring. So, you know, stains are usually just one spot. Maybe it kind of streaks down, but this one is too uniform. So yeah, that's actually pretty cool. It's got this nice patch here, uh, Springfield is where it's at, and yeah. Indian motorcycle. So never really find pieces like that. This guy definitely has a good eye when it comes to picking because clothing's not his main category. He does electronics video games. Uh, he just, you know, scooped up clothes from, you know, the years of thrifting and yeah, let me pick through it. So really appreciate that. This is Zero uh, Restrictions Golf Outerwear. Now this one does have a legit stain on the back. It's this black piece, but um, this is like the sleeveless, you know, quarter snap not great. Yellow's not really the best color when it comes to this stuff, but I think this is one of the older ones. I'm not entirely sure. It does say lightweight on it, but I'll see if I can put some shout and throw this in the wash and get that thing up, taken care of. And we have a decisive one. Now this is uh, Marmot, which I always used to say Marimount or Marmot. 
it's a size medium and it's like this windbreaker. I may put this on. I don't know, man. I, I have something about like good material, good branded items, especially in a size medium in black, which is one of my favorite colors. It, it feels pretty good. I think it'd be a great base layer piece if I needed to wear something heavier over it. So we're going to rock it for the rest of the video just to see uh, how that feels. And then we'll go on to this one. Now this is Vineyard Vines on the go performance. So anytime you see performance in the brands like Ralph Lauren, Vineyard Vines, um, you know, those Brooks Brothers performance, those types of shirts have a better sell through rate. They have a higher chance of selling for, you know, decent money, you know, and decent money. We're talking like a solid 25, maybe 30 on something like this. Then we have this Wrangler piece. Now this is one of the older tags. I don't know if it's the true vintage tag, but it has that nice color blocking to it. Any color blocking Wrangler, especially in pearl snaps, is going to do decently well. 2XL at that. And I'll have to double check this one for stains, but I just noticed this. The inside of the cuff has like that uh, either denim chambray type look. It's probably chambray, I think. I still don't quite know the difference between the two, but uh, yeah, it matches the inside of the collar too. And this one, yeah, I've not seen it before. Uh, double front pockets with a snap, so that's a really good one too. Maybe 30 bucks on that one. Then last, but definitely not least, is going to be this cinch long sleeve button shirt. Whenever I was looking at this shirt, the first thing I saw was this patch over here, and I thought it was kind of strange. i just never seen this patch on the sleeve. But then I've seen cinch like on this sleeve, and I've definitely seen the spell out on this. So uh, definitely a good piece. It's an XL. It's one of the older cinch tags. And, you know, it's a little faded. The color's not like super crisp, but, um, you know, hopefully some country guy's going to pick that up and really enjoy it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you guys enjoyed the day in the life. I mean, my days, especially on days that I don't go sourcing, they're kind of all over the place. I have tons of different things that I need to work on. And usually it's just kind of like, all right, make sure I don't miss any meetings. Make sure I answer all the emails. Make sure I eat. Make sure Randy's uh, lined out so she has stuff to do. And then make sure, you know, when my son comes home, my wife comes home, like spend that, that time with them. And when they go to bed, I'm going to go list my items. Like I said before, try to knock those out. I'll probably edit some of the uh, clothing review uh, things that I did earlier today for products and call it a night. And then tomorrow, we'll just kind of do the same thing, just see what the day brings. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. This is like the realistic thing of like when you run your own business, this is kind of what you can expect. People are definitely more organized than me. Like I didn't work out today. I probably need to try to get in a workout before they come. I have about 30 minutes. So sometimes it's good whenever she comes and I'm like in the middle of a workout and I'm like, hey, I'm about to finish. And then, you know, I can get like another 15, 20 minutes while she's uh, managing my son and everything. But yeah, anyway, that's pretty much it. I'll see you guys next one. Bye.